Hello guys. Um, uh, I guess last time uh, my internet gave up on me. I was talking too much. So, so let's go ahead, go over these two, uh, a, a few um, or, uh, orders left and one subphylum left on Arthropoda. Uh, one of them is uh, the orders of the lice. Of course, we have the lice that are blood sucking lice and then we have chewing glass. So the blood sucking lice would be the uh, order Anoplura and the chewing lice, we human do not get them. Okay, <laughs> and that would be Malopago. So Anoplurans, you know, the uh, blood sucking lice pierce their mouth, uh, piercing mouth parts. They have Anoplurans or ectoparasites of placental animals like us. So, you know, we have placenta and they feed on us and other organisms that have placenta, like um, primates and so on and so forth. So uh, stout mandibles, they have mandibles, they're wingless and no eyes or a very uh, modified eyes. They, they both have, uh, they both live uh, in hair or feather of animals. And then um, what I mean, they both, I'm talking about both orders, okay? so. Um, not the anaplura, uh, but anyhow, they are very host specific and they became uh, site specific. And then uh, they are simple metamorphosis, and most of them uh, cling to the hair or uh, feather, except human body louse that uh, clings to the uh, uh, body louse uh, clings to the clothing. Here they are uh, examples of uh, their louse. And here they are uh, the uh, body louse that uh, clings to the clothing. And usually this happens after the wars, floods, when people do not wash their clothes or they're in close contact, uh, contact with each other. That's when these things usually happen, uh, the uh, body louse. And here they are, the eggs attached to uh, a hair, uh, and that's called knit, N-I-T. So human uh, louse uh, can spread um, uh, typhus, the body louse, uh, the, uh, the thyrus pubis, uh, it's a, a pubic lice, uh, which happens in genitals, in genitals and armpits. And then uh, for the uh, thyrus pubis, pH is silent, uh, you, can, you can get the medication, pH is silent, pH is silent, and then what you can do, you can go to the store, to drug store, and get the medication for it. Um, I don't think there is, uh, uh, there is um, doctor's prescription needed for uh, thyrus pubis. Uh, it is transmitted by sexual contact. And out of the arthropods, there are two uh, scabies, and of course, thyrus pubis can be transmitted sexually. Okay. Uh, Periculus humanus capitis is the head louse that uh, there was one study 90 some odd person of the school children in the United States have now with Corona it's reducing because you know kids bump their heads to each other uh, and then so the lice go from one student to the next uh, pupil. Uh, so that's the head louse common in the United States. Ridiculous humanus humanus, the body louse that you saw, as I said, it happens after the wars and floods and, you know, uh, close uh, proximity of people with each other. Does not cling to the hair, rather to the clothing, transmit typhus, trans fever, relapsing fever. I would like you to know this, okay? So um, typhus is the biggest one. Trench fever, when the soldiers were in trenches, that's what it got its name. Uh, the soldiers were in trench, uh, dressed together, so they rubbed against each other and the body louts got, and then of course it transferred, uh, relapsing fever and so on and so forth. Uh, chewing lice, parasites of birds and mammals, uh, important veterinary parasites, the malopagian, uh, malopagian uh, tubules. I'm going to put this, I expect that phone call from Delta College. I'm going to pause it. Meeting is being yeah, that was from Delta College. You know, they wanted something, so I didn't take, take it back. Okay, anyhow, Mal Malophaga, uh, they do not uh, parasitize uh, human. Of course, they are for birds and other mammals. And here they are, they are talking about uh, pubic lice, 
and what happens with uh, pubic rice and so on and so forth. Um, anyhow, these are, I have to look up and see what they are. Okay, uh, I think this is the one to the last order or maybe uh, two more orders and then we're done. Order Siphonoptera, which are fleas. And the name of the flea for human, which is rare in the United States, the name of the flea for human is Pulex irritans. And a lot of times I forget that this because um, it's not common. Uh, human flea and transmit plate. Okay, very important. The transmit plate. And then uh, uh, black death by bacteria Eucernia pestis and Rickettsia uh, typhi. And, and also uh, transmit by this uh, organisms, Pulex irritans, and uh, Pigenium can detect the air currents. Uh, you know, the very, at the end of the abdomen, it's a Pigenium, this is the abdomen, the very last segment is called Pigenium. They're not host specific, they can, uh, for example, um, uh, C is silent, Tenocephalidae, uh, they are the flea for dogs and cats. They can jump on human and take a blood meal and they can cause rashes, pains in human. Some of them, they bite us and we don't even feel it. But one thing we studied in the past because of this flea, uh, tenocephalidase, uh, we can get the tapeworm uh, from uh, them uh, and that would be uh, uh, Dipilidium canina. They also attack human, uh, as you know, we are talking about tenocephalidae. Feces of flea is uh, food for the flea larval stages and transmit feline harbors as well, too. Okay, so that tenocephalidae can, and parvovirus is equivalent to HIV in uh, felines in cats. Place a few mothballs in vacuum bags. Again, I'm not sure about mothball anymore. Um, they say the mothball, the chemicals in it, it cause cancer. So I don't see them in stores as much. They still, I think they still sell them, uh, but I don't see them as much anymore. But um, I would say a few cedar balls, if you can get some cedars, uh, put them in vacuum bags and that should kill them. Uh, you know, the smell of cedar kills a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, arthropods, unwanted insects. Here they are in the life cycle of it. Uh, Rickettsia, Dipilidium canino. Okay, order uh, uh, Hemiptera, the bugs, when, uh, when uh, the Ernest Eisner at the beginning was talking about bugs, he was not talking about these bugs. Uh, he was talking about bugs the whole entire uh, phylum uh, uh, of the arthropod. Two pairs of wings, vestigial, um, a triangular shield between the wings. That is significant. That is something I would like you to know. That's a dead giveaway. It's the order Hemiptera. Okay, four segment antenna, not significant. A simple metaphor versus Reduvid's bugs. Yes, they are called assassin bugs. We do have them in the lab. Sometimes when you come back, you can take a look at them. And these are some of the assassin bugs, which they transmit uh, um, Trypanosoma cruzii, Tritoma uh, rodinus and uh, Panstrungulus, they are transmit American uh, Trypanosomiasis, Chagas disease. Here they are, life cycle of Chagas disease and being transmit. Okay, so, these are the name of the orders that we do have specimen in the lab. And then I would like you to know them for the lab purposes. So let's go over them. Coleoptera, they are beetles, ladybugs, and uh, best bugs. So the displays we have in the lab, you know, I would like you to identify them. And then I will ask lab practical exam questions. I mean, after all, I did not give you an example. I did not talk about it, I should have. Uh, but anyhow, Hymenoptera, carpenter ant, wasps, bee. Uh, dragonfly, and Lepidoptera, butterfly, moth. Very important, um, Lepidoptera, my favorite. 
uh, hemiptera, they are uh, sting bugs, uh, giant water bugs, bed bugs, uh, cymex, okay, we talked about cymex uh, is a bed bug um, in, the, uh, in the lab, and uh, kissing bugs and cymex, bed bugs, we don't know what they transmit. Uh, so far, nothing has been reported that the bed bugs transmit, but um, the their bites is painful and it's very hard to get rid of if a person has it in their house. Orthoptera, grasshopper, uh, phasmadia, walking sticks, and isoptera, they are termites. Okay, so uh, we studied all of them. Okay, the last subphylum, uh, subphylum, myropoda, uh, many footed, uh, mainly terceria, head and trunk, um, uniramus, appendages, you know, the appendages are not branch, okay. Um, one pair of antenna, so. Uh, of course, the mouth is mandibulate and have maxilla, and they have spiracles, malpighian tubules, nothing. Okay, the class, there are two classes. So I will put a centipedes and I will ask uh, what class it belongs to. Here they are, this is class centipedes, and a uh, common name is centipede, of course, and they have a few to 177 uh, stomites. Okay, you know. And what happens, most of these guys, sending it means 100, they do not have, most of these guys do not have 100 uh, somites, appendages, uh, it's less than that. The maximum uh, the members of this class have is 177. I hope I'm making some sense. And then uh, maybe poisonous, uh, they come out of the, uh, the bathtubs of the old houses. Um, there are some poisons, ones found uh, in uh, south of the border. Uh, but the ones in usually United States, they are not that, uh, they are not uh, uh, poisonous. A pair of antenna, uh, a pair of mandible, and two pairs of maxilla. Head has ocelli, simple eye, and compound eyes. And direct development, young, similar to uh, the adult, and they're carnivorous. And uh, that's also, I would like you to know that these guys, the class uh, Chiliopoda, they are. Um, Carnivores. Okay, then the millipedes, diplopoda, um, they are millipedes. It seems like they have millions of legs, but they don't. Usually they don't have millions of legs. A maximum in one species, uh, millipede means 1,000 actually. So I'm saying 1,000 legs. Uh, legs. Um, so uh, the maximum they have is about 752. Uh, most have fewer than 50. And they do not have that uh, many feet, but they have uh, many appendages, uh, spiracles on each somite, and then um, not as active as centipedes. And then uh, they need dark, moist uh, places. Most are herbivores. They're not carnivores. So that's what I would like you to know. But, uh, Millipedes, diplopoda. So, and a pair of mandibles and maxilla, and that would be uh, the end of the lecture for um, this. Let's go ahead and talk about, this. and let's talk about echinoderms. It should not take long um, to talk about echinoderms. So I hope you guys can see these. Uh, echinoderms, the name of the phylum. So um, they're strange animals, uh, and I'll explain it when the PowerPoints come up. I will explain it why they're strange. They're uh, free moving radial symmetry animals. That's part of their strangeness because they're radial symmetry. Uh, they probably evolved from a bilateral symmetry animal. So they're radial symmetry animals, and they're very complex. The radial symmetry animal, remember the radial symmetry animal, anyway, I cut it, both halves are alike. So um, since they're radial symmetry animal and they're complex, that's why zoologists call them, they are uh, strange. Some have poison glands, the adurosum, the first group of deuter, except human, the first group of deuterosum animals we study. Okay, they're entrocilus and they are silomates. Okay, so make sure you know these things about these animals for the final exam and for everything else. So, 
Okay, other phyla that this group, uh, the deuterostroms are uh, ketognatha, hemichordata, and chordata. These are other phyla that are uh, deuterostrom. Uh, they have a, a system of water from silomy compartment, endoskeleton made up of calcareous uh, ossicles. So they have skeleton inside of the body, and uh, it's made up of calcium carbonate, of course, and calcareous. And they are called ossicles, not ossili, simple eyes. If you remember that, they're called ossicles. They close to each other, do not get them mixed up. Okay, no other group with complex organ system is radial symmetry. That's why they are strange. Jellyfish, hydra, they were very simple, they were not complex. So, why these guys are complex and their radial symmetry? Okay, no ability uh, to osmoregulate, uh, but they have water vascular system. Uh, their particle feeders, such as uh, sea stars, and then um, their predators, unsegmented uh, body parts, five or more radiating ambulacra, no head or region or body or brain, uh, locomotion by two feet, which I will elaborate on it a little bit later on. I don't want to talk too much. Um, and then uh, digestive system usually complete, anus absence and oviroideas, uh, extensive uh, coelom, they have some species. Uh, blood vascular system is hemal system, um, excretory absent, uh, but sexes are separate. Some mammals feed on them, uh, see others usually, but they are not good food. Um, other animals would not like to eat them, except a few, like sea cucumbers, sure. Uh, other animals would love to eat them uh, because of their spines. Uh, other animals usually do not care for them, except they um, the see others. Uh, feed on mollusks. They like to eat mollusks, usually by valvia and crustaceans. And egg uh, can develop into adult without a presence of sperm. And we remember, we talked about this, that's called uh, parthenogenesis under special conditions. Here is a general anatomy of um, sea stars. They have these uh, ampulla right here. These are ampulla. And on, at, the end, at the other end of the ampulla are, the, are tube feet, okay? Or podia, another name for tube feet is podia, okay? or podium is singular podia. And then, um, then you have these madriporites. You can see it from outside. That's part of the water vascular system right here. And then you have this stone canal. Gonads, anus on top. Um, these are digestive glands right here. Of course, the spine and tube feeds. These are all tube feeds. And then stomach right here. And they have the water vascular uh, system. These are the functions of the water vascular system. If you would, uh, locomotion, attachment, respiration, food handling, and sensory. Uh, so inside of the animal, uh, I'm sorry, when you look at the ventral portion of the animal, you see the ambulacral groove. Ambulacral groove, it's a groove, you know, already know, and two feet are here. So these would be two feet, and the groove right here, it would be ambulacral groove. Um, the cross section of it, uh, let's go over it. So you have the, spin, uh, the, the spines and skin, digestive glands, of course, uh, gonads, yes. And then you can see ampulla contracts. When ampulla contracts, it uh, pushes the water out. And when ampulla relaxes, the water comes in and that's how they move. Imagine they have thousands of these. So when they suck the water in and then they push it out so they can move slowly. And when we used to go to uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, you could see some of the starfish attach the glass just like this. This is the glass, vertical glass, and then they would attach the glass just like that uh, because of, again, the two feet. Okay, Magiprites is part of the water vascular system. So the way this, it works, the water goes in, uh, is sucked by ampulla, and the water goes into 
uh, uh, tube feed, and from tube feed, it goes into these canals. It goes to the radial canal, and then you have lateral canal. Um, these on the sides are called lateral canal, lateral canal, lateral canal. It goes to the uh, radial canal, and from radial canal can can go to the ring canal, and from ring canal it can go to the stone canal, and from stone canal it can uh, get out through the matricula. So you know, digestive glands and gonads. The first class is class asteroidia. Again, there is, um, I put a lot of information in here. I'm sorry. I will try to read them. And then whatever I want you to know, I will circulate. So you would know what I expect from each class that you should know. There are four or five classes that you should know. The common name, of course, you have to know uh, the starfish or uh, sea star. And then body covered with ciliated pigmented uh, epidermis. I'm not too significant about that. Mouth on the oral side, definitely. I might ask you a question. The brittle star and C star compare it. Okay. So ambulacrum uh, runs in the mouth to the tip. I talked about that a little bit that you have the two feet. Okay. Two feet. And then that right here is called ambulacral. And from inside of the animal, you have ambulacral ridge. Uh, look at the lab videos. So ambulacral group is bordered by rows of the two feet. I already talked about that. Radial, uh, so all of these are important. Radial or nerve is the center of each ambulacral group. Uh, and then um, aboral surface is the rough and spine. So the starfish mouth is here. This side is a little bit smoother than that side. That's the aboral. Anus is on top. Remember that. So, uh, Pedestalaria, they're like a pinchers. They clean the surface of the animal and they can also bring food to the mouth. It's called Pedestalaria. And we do have slide of them in the lab, microscopic slide of these guys. Papula is the, or dermal uh, branchi, uh, bronchi. Bronchi, it means um, um, respiration or skin gills aligned with uh, peritoneum. Anus on the aboral side. Remember that anus on the aboral side. And ossicles are the endoskeleton made up of calcium carbonate. Do not confuse it with simple eyes. Simple eyes called ocilla. Coelom is filled with fluid, of course, like any other species. Uh, this fluid has amoebocytes. Definitely, you should know that these amoebocytes or coelomocytes, uh, another name from coelomocytes, they cleanse inside of the animal. Okay the internal organs and uh, put it into the papilla. Papilla is the, so, so everything in here, you guys, I would like you to know. Everything in this uh, information, in this page, you should know. Water vascular system, I talked about it, how the water percolates in the, in the animal. You should know that. Magic fluoride, small pores to open to the outside, and then magic fluoride leads to stone canal, to ring canal. I talked about that, that radio canal, and the lateral group. Uh, each ray attached to the ring canal, four or five uh, Titan bodies, and uh, one of them is uh, polyan vesicles. So polyan vesicles is a structure that they do make amoebocytes. You know, I talked about that. And then Titan bodies, they are the ones that they, uh, they are storage of water. They storage water in their um, so polyam vesicles absent in some sea stars and uh, asteroid. Oh, sorry. Here again, the circulation of the water in the animal. I talked about that. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. So you have stomach, digestive glands, gonads here, and that would be amulacral ridge right here. Remember that? That's is something for the lap. So let's see, uh, these are polyan vesicles and these are ring canal and titan bodies. Titan bodies are smaller, polyan vesicles are reservoir. What did I say last? Polyan vesicles, no, I'm sorry, take that back. Right there. 
And then the uh, Polian vesicles, they are uh, uh, water reservoir. Okay. So these are water reservoirs, larger, and then uh, the Tightman bodies are smaller than the Tightman bodies, and they do make amoebocytes. Okay, lateral canal connects the radial canal to cylindrical polio or two feet along uh, the side of the ambulacral group uh, in each ray. Ampulla lies within the uh, body coelom and outer end of uh, which uh, that bears the suckers. I'm not too crazy about any of that information. Uh, contraction of the muscles in the ampulla forces uh, the podium. I talked about that. This is a little bit more detailed than uh, I expect you to know. Digestive system, mouth to oral esophagus, stomach, digestion happen extracellular, anus, of course, it's inconspicuous, it's on the oral end of the animal, um, anyhow. Hemocele system, we don't know the function of it. So if the function is unknown, uh, that's all I want you to know on the hemocele system. Reproductive regeneration by autotomy, what happens, autotomy, these animals, they break down one of the arms and that arm grows back again. And that's called autotomy. You see it in sea animals. Okay, so it's called regeneration. When you cut the animal, when the fishermen catch these in the net and they, they cut them to pieces and they put them back in the sea, no, they, each one of them are going to go back. When you catch them uh, in your net as a fisherman, do not cut them for God's sake. Just push them back in the sea and that's it. If you cut them and then you put them back, each one of those pieces will go back. So sex is separate, ex, uh, uh, fer, uh, fertilization external, uh, bipinary larva, you saw that at the beginning of semester um, because we were looking at the, the stages of the development, like morula, blastula, you remember that? Gastula, and after gastula was bipinary larva. Arms can regenerate easily, even if they are all lost. Uh, autotomy, uh, I talked about that development is that. Eggs are brooded, they can't be in some species. Okay, the next class, class of Aroidea, brittle star. There are some differences. Most species have five arms, just like their cousins, um, Asteroidea. They are more, the arms are more slender. The differences between the two, I hope. And then no pedicillary or papules, remember that. Uh, ambulacral groove are closed and covered with uh, arms. Uh, no suckers on two feet. Two feet are for feeding, uh, but not for not much for uh, locomotion. So all of these you should know. Where was ambulacral growth across and from this one? Okay, magiprites uh, are what is he saying on the oral surface? Yes, you are, I think I already said that. And then uh, vertebrate, uh, oh, uh, we asked to show you some pictures. So they are slender arms and each segment inside of the animal, each ossicles inside of the animal is called vertebrate. Uh, column articulated ossicles connected by muscles and uh, plates and nerves. Okay, locomotion is arm movement. Five uh, movable plates uh, serve as the jaws and then uh, no anus. Uh, indigestible materials out through the skin. Skin is healthy, uh, it's leathery, not healthy. It's, of course, it's healthy, too. it's leathery and no a and cellular surface. So, everything in here, I would like you to know skin is leathery, I'm not that crazy, but all of these are important as well. Okay. Uh, visceral organs are in the central disc. And I'll show you a picture, uh, stomach, but no intestine. Uh, yeah, they have a structure called bursae, which it uh, stores the young in there. Water circulation is out through the sacs are extensional. They're nocturnal, so bursae, stomach, visceral, and uh, they're not 
Bruno, sex is separate, some go with the young university, as I mentioned. The other one is called uh, Ophiliotis. Do not worry about that. The name of the regeneration and autotomy again happens. Here we go. So here is a central disc. The visceral mass of this organism is in central disc, but in the cousin, with their cousins, asteroidia, they were in the arm. Remember in the arm, you had digestive glands and you have gonads. Stomach was here. These guys, they have everything here. And the arms, each arm is made up of these vertebrates. Okay? They're all vertebrates. Two feet is really not functional. So if there was a race, I would guess these animals would win because they do not have two feet. They just move very fast with their vertebrae. Okay, then here is the mouth part. And of course, they do not have anus. And these are the, the oral shields that we were talking about. Class Econoidio, compact uh, body in an uh, endoskeleton test or shell, lack arms. The tests show a, a pentamerous plant of a, a kind of that have a hemispherical shape, radial symmetry, uh, sand dollar, heart urchins, five and lacrosse rows are homologous to the five um, of the, the other organisms. Again, uh, just make sure that endoskeleton or test, that's the one I would like to do. Lack arms, yeah. Um, spines. They have spines, of course, important, significant. Nothing else is that um, the chewing part Aristotle's, okay? So a chewing mechanism called Aristotle's lantern, and uh, that's the chewing parts in the mouth. Uh, they are omnivorous, yeah. the hemocele and nervous system, sex is separate, external fertilization. None of these are that significant. So here they are spines. The, the specimens in the, have, in the lab we have, the spines have been broken over the years. And then the visceral mass is inside of the animal. And they have five, if you would, rays, just like their cousins. Not all asteroidia, they have five rays. If you would have gone to Monterey, you see some of them have 10 or nine. Okay, so uh, these are, sorry about that. Sorry about that, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's what is happening with this. Chewing apparatus right here, Aristotle lantern. I would like to do that. Okay, the class Holothoroidia, uh, greatly elongated, uh, oral, uh, oral axis. Um, ossicles are reduced, body wall is leathery, and that's what uh, we eat. Uh, it says sea cucumber, uh, and that's what I would like you to know. Again, none of these are significant. Okay, so what happens when these animals, since they are juicy, other animals like to eat them. So what happens, they eject every, they, all of the gut, they throw it out. So the predator will eat them and then they grow back the gut again. And um, that is called the um, visceral structure loss or self-mutilation, okay? That's only for the sea cucumbers, for sea cucumbers. And then of course, there is a, a fish called uh, carapace lives within the sea cucumber and that's okay. So those are I mentioned what you should know as far as here it is. Do not worry about all of these structures, but all of that internal structures can be ejected out through this area. Of course, these are the tentacles and then the predator will eat those, and then these can go back, self-mutilation. Class Cronoidia see lilies and feather stars, and that's uh, their sessile, of course, I would like you to know those. And then uh, they have a central disc, it's called calyx, I would like you to know that, and covered red skin, uh, te uh, tegmen, and contain calcareous parts. Poor developed uh, epidermis, uh, calyx, uh, none of these, I'd like to show you a picture. Um, they have cirri, 
none of these again. You have to work it right here. So combination of the arm and calyx, this leathery part, is together is called crown. Pineals are little structures that are coming out of the arms. And on the body, this thing is called the body, if you would, they have cirri, and uh, this didn't get all the way, you know, they have stock. This is called stock. And then um, skeletal plates, each one of these have skeletal plates. Okay, skull gone. This class, uh, I'm not sure your textbook is mentioning it, uh, class constant tricycloidia, um, you know, I'm not going to make, we don't have any specimen. All of these other classes, we do have specimen in the lab. This class, we do not have any specimen in the lab. It's been discovered recently. And I just wrote, if you guys want to, for information, we want to. And that's the end of the exam. Do not worry about the remaining slides here. Uh, that's the end of the exam. Uh, all right, guys.